Oh, that's right. <laughs> Naturally, naturally, naturally. They literally mostly come out at night, literally. <laughs> wow. Those strawberries are definitely not of this earth world, out of this world. THX certified strawberries. Wow. Mm. I mean, seriously. Seriously. Literally, look at the size of that. Literally. Look at the size of it. Literally. It's huge. Look at that. It's like something out of the uh, attack of the. Um, Attack of the uh, attack of the uh, tomato, um, like the attack of the, to, to, to the uh, tomatoes, and then now he got the attack of the the strawberries. All oh, the strawberries, they're succulent and so oh, they're succulent, mouth watering. Oh crikey! Actually, I prefer these without the double cream because I think the double cream would just not be very too good consuming all that double cream. I think these just on their own, you know, why smother it in cream? Oh, mm. yeah, I might as well just, oh, damn, I'm down to the last strawberry. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if I could stick a straw, stick a straw into the strawberry and suck it like a vampire. Shh. Suck it like a vampire. Hmm. Wow. Aliens. Gets better and better. beast this movie is. This gets better and better in THX. Oh, so much to experiment with. So much, so much on, so much THX experimental, literally potential experimentation. Wow. Trouble is, most 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 of these home theatre people, uh, home theatre top top light ones on YouTube, and that. I think, you know, I think THX is just kind of like frizzled, you know, and it's not on their radar screen anymore, you know. They lost the, uh, you know, the inspiration.
keeping keeping the THX dream alive, sort of thing, if you know what I mean. Literally. Wow. What they call this aliens movie? A air buster? <laughs> oh. Damn that base and that drop ship and that James Horner score. What do they call that? A air buster? Flipping that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can feel the bass moving across my... I can feel it moving across me. Oh. So, a little bit more of the art and um, rehearse, the, you know, the sound rehearsing. Uh, flipping that, because... I can imagine what this would be like. I could imagine what it would have been like at the High Wycombe. Because I only saw Arachnophobia there, 1990, January 1990. But I've heard urban legends from other other people that have been there. Well, the guy that I went up with, um, the guy I went up there with, he said, you got, you know, oh, oh THX, you've heard of THX. Yeah, uh, because I only knew of the Empire Leicester Square then. I didn't know there was a, another one in the UK, though subconsciously I knew there was, because I read an article many years ago, but it was very brief. You know, it didn't give too much information. There wasn't too much information. Mm. And of course, I knew the Warner. I knew there was the Warner THX in Leicester Square. Um, I didn't know there was a, there was another one hidden hidden off the radar screen on the outskirts of London, Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire. Wow. THX showmanship presentation there was first class. Yeah, first class. my tummy <laughs> oh wow that 
is so uncanny. Oh, they've been brilliant. Of course, of course, that's quite a bit of output in the bass uh, and controlling certain frequencies. Literally, oh. oh, the THX mostly literally comes out at night, literally. Mm. Oh. they call this literally an air buster oh wow god talk about going on an airplane and going up on the ascent and then the cabin pressure flipping that
God, that, that just that little bit there, or some part of that sound there. It's like a few years later, and it? it's sort of like uh, in Cape Fear, there's this kind of bass drop in THX, Dolby SR at the Empire Leicester Square. And it, it, it has this flipping deep, like, plomp, plomp, where this anchor weight is thrown into the water and the sound effect that proceeds follows it. And then this deep, freaking, oh, it's just flipping huge. It just uniformly presses against the body. Huge, huge. That's what it sounds like in Aliens. With the echo sound slightly in the monomatrix around. I can hear this like clump as the dropship lands on, on the, the uh, platform. Mm. Wow. But it's a bit distant, but it's a bit distant in the mix. <coughs> but it's there. It's there. shift the uh, surrounds if I want to I can face shift them um, mm. actually thinking about putting something else in line in line in the system so I can uh, possibly uh, correct any phase error uh, things in a left total right total so it's only simply one of the left total right total signals if they are um, slightly less skewed up it's got on the uh, encode or the transferring um that could be easily corrected if you put the right if you put the right device in line and then you can phase adjust it variably uh along with maybe a behringer um deq probably one of those that that are probably uh do something as well but go add something else in line because there's only the uh the uh deq doesn't have the other thing so you've got to plug something else in and it's only a case of adjusting the the tilt air the tilt of the um you know the signaling because of the uh, phase the phase is slightly um you know one is slightly you know, turn it around the other way, and then you got to have the uh, the other out. You got to have the outputs uh, corrected as well, and then <clears throat> for the encode decoding, it's complicated, but it is simple. It's it's ancient technology, but mm.
Sub base extension on. Wow. an air buster Wow, the science on it. The science. The THX science. Mm. Wow. 
Oh, that's way better than the Odeon. Oh, that's way better than the Odeon. Oh. Yeah, one thing with Odeon, they, they, they've never had an Odeon cinema in the UK that's ever been THX certified. Curious. I thought they were literally fanatical about film. <laughs> I must have been misinformed. <laughs> the standards are, are great. You know, the standards are brilliant, but obviously they're, they're, they can't be asked to, you know. Anyway, enough about Odeon. It's too expensive, and you get a you, you get you get a you don't really get a good cinema uh, experience. <laughs> oh. Crikey, they don't even serve yogurt at Odeon Cinemas. Crying out loud, what is wrong with that? I can't imagine a cinema that doesn't serve yogurt. Well, that's that's the thing with home cinema. You get you say like you know your guest, you will know your uh, you know. You know something about it. And say like, um, so you you get some things in, okay? So to cater, you know, for uh, you know uh, courtesy and such. But you know, you, you go to Odeon. Oh, it's it's literally the thumbs down. Yeah. So what? Popcorn. So what? Bloody hell. What about something else? What about a nice sandwich? You know, you you find out what they like, and you say, well, I got I got something you like. I know you like this, and also I don't mind it myself, so I'm not really fussed. Um, the only one, the only one thing it's not allowed is no smoking, <laughs> except for the the smoke machine. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, popcorn, popcorn. I don't know. It's too messy. Actually, popcorn's too is a. It's rather a noisy food, and and during quiet scenes in a soundtrack, and if you're literally one of these, oh, home theatre immersive listeners, and you're stuffing your fat, you're stuffing your mouth with popcorn. Uh, obviously, you've not done thorough testing because what you would hear is an in-head cavity noise sound crunching, and that can mask. The experience. Ah, you're better off with a nice succulent sandwich, soft bread, um, nice, nice, you know. So it's um, less noisy, sort of thing. Sweet wrappers, uh, sweet wrappers, uh, and such. No, nah, that's 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 not allowed in this THX cinema. George Lucas, he doesn't even allow popcorn in his his THX screening room. He doesn't allow it. And, and yeah, one, it gets on the floor, it gets messy, but also the, you know, crunching it, you're just going to spoil the experience if you do psychological, if you do psychoacoustic study and all the sound and stuff. Um, you know, an, av an average sweet wrapper, when you're moving it and crunching it, it makes a certain frequency sound and a certain SPL level. And that can cause a uh, frequency masking effect, you know. You know, eat before you go and watch a movie or eat afterwards. You know, it's the same thing with, um, but you can drink. Yeah, you can drink because you might get, <gasps> crikey, the sound system is really, I'm really participating with it and it's really making me exhausted and I'm, uh, I need a drink because <laughs> you get dehydrated. Um, but not, no, most people just hear the sound and then just sit there, don't they? Just like catatonic. My goodness. Uh, I look at, I look at uh, maybe a few, few, few of these home theater um, people on YouTube and they just sat there like catatonic. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're in awe and they're just like, uh, amazed, <laughs> but no, I don't see him. I don't see him reacting or anything to the sound frequencies that are moving around in such a way that normally, um, in reality, it's a little bit more different. It's a little bit more subtle. It's a, it's a total different, different, a different ball game entirely. 
you know, real, 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 real sounds, whether it's in the room itself. You know, I could take, I could take any object if I want to. I'm not going to, I'm not going to start throwing the remote control around, but I could take any other object, maybe like a soft ball or something and throw it literally anywhere in this room. And it's going to make a sound once it hits that surface speakers no they're just hot spots they're just hot spots and uh that's why i think atmos is pretty rubbish you know i might as well just go back listening to dolby stereo mixes for crying out loud you know push comes to shove you know i've had enough of atmos um there there are ways i could improve it myself i can modify it where everyone else has got their home theater atmos Best ever set up. And I just, I would just take a glance back, step back, listen and think, hmm, I can improve that and make it way better than theirs. In fact, way better than the dubbing stage because it's the same thing on a dub stage. They're hot spots with the speakers, you know. It's not an opinion. It's not a, in a case of my opinion. If Atmos Dolby Labs are not going to take it serious, spatial sound, <laughs> spatial sound. What about what about the little things in between the gaps in between the speakers? Crikey, there's nothing there. But then, how big is a how long is a piece of string? You know, what size mid range drivers do you need? What size tweeters do you need? What size bass drivers do you need? Crying out loud. Uh, if I took a certain object and threw it at the wall, it's going to make a certain sound and a certain frequency. This is that simple. For which nature itself cannot be fooled. Oh, you know it's true what I'm saying. So, so I know you. I bust your Atmos bubble, and um, now you're feeling frown and depressed. There's going to be mass mass uh, atmos um suicide um left right and center and overhead <laughs> um now you're probably just going to go back and think hmm he's absolutely right you you know i'm absolutely right and you just go and think how can i redo this how can i make it better all right dolby labs say this screw dolby labs Are you wound up? Are you wound up uh, robots? Crying out loud. Talk about freedom of speech. And most of you haven't even got freedom of thinking anymore. You just think, oh, I accept it. I accept it as the gospel. <laughs> it must be true. But, you know, you listen to it carefully, even with pink noise. And it's like. Yeah, it's in that position there and it's got that sound and then you move over there and you can tell, you know, if you put another speaker there. So like if you've got a, uh, an overhead speaker or a speaker that's placed overhead and you add another and another and you make the footprint a little bit larger. <laughs> and you could do a little bit more with it and then think, hmm, I wonder if I can add on. But, you know, because one person one time, he he's he's like thinking, but he he went uh, with trying to put a decoder between uh, going this way. So you got a height speaker over there and then place another decoder in between. So thinking that the sound panning uh, might move from one speaker here sounding and then move to the next speaker and then sounding which would be like a um, like adding on a pro logic decoder and you get the sound but you know because you get a half pan so when the sound's moving from that speaker over to this one you're going to get a half pans you're going to get a half phantom sound and but trouble is uh he discovered that late you know lately uh it, it just wouldn't work properly because sometimes there's nothing in those speakers and it doesn't really work very well but occasionally occasionally works like say alien um, covenant i think where there's a spacecraft alien thing it's 
you hear it panning over this way, going from speaker to speaker to speaker to speaker, and then it comes on screen. Um, um, and then the uh, it fades out, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's possible, you know, some films, and then it will pan to speak, and then you could do other little tricks to make it a little bit more better than what Dolby Labs, um, you know. But it works better going side to side stereo. If you get some good, if you get uh, encodings that are decent in stereo and they're up there, then you can then you can mess around with it a little bit better. You can make it not just two speakers, but you can make it three, one, two, three, or you can make it even five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. And thus you increase the the area coverage on the ceiling. And sometimes it shouldn't be localizable. Sometimes it should be diffused and think, hmm, just as if it were real life. Sometimes you hear a helicopter flying around outside. You can't tell what location, direction it's coming from because it's up pretty high. It's over at a certain angle. The houses and buildings are all around and you just get sound reflection. Until it comes into, then you notice that you're listening and you can hear the shifting pitch in the sound as it's gradually moving. The, the rotor blades are still at the, probably still going at the same RPMs and gradually the helicopter's shifting and probably going, maybe a dipping down a bit or going up and then cross and so It's probably doing something like that. And you've got wind as well and that's changing the, you know, you can hear this pitch shifting, but in an Atmos mix, I haven't even heard it accurate yet. I haven't even heard one bloody movie that's got Atmos with a helicopter that sounds pretty psychoacoustic realistic on the overheads. It, they can do it, but they just can't be asked bothered. They just can't be asked to do a decent mix sometimes. They just rush it. And sometimes it sounds a bit synthetic. It sounds a bit plastic sounding it doesn't sound or organic or like to the actual thing itself probably budget it's probably their budget or they got a very bad sound library in the sound recordings though they might be decent in maybe something else 5.1 or something but when you're trying to create this immersive storytelling helicopter overhead best ever it's like, uh, anyway, you got when you have a helicopter overhead, it's very complicated because you got to have the, the camera's got to be around here, in this sort of position, and then you, you hear, you know, you hear, and then you, you look up, but it's off screen until the camera turns and tilts and pans up and tilts upward looking. As if we're looking, so it'd be switching to a, like a POV. You know, you can't see me. I can, you know, and then it sort of then it looks upward and looking around like a like a POV point of view. <sighs> yeah, that takes a lot of takes a lot of thinking to design that, and then mixing and thinking. And then going over it and over it and over it, making sure there's no errors in the in the uh, in the sound mixing and the the and the sounds and such of that that are all assembled on the console, you know, on the Pro Tools and such. You know, you got to get it all so it to not just fool the mixer, but to, you know, then you got to get some test subjects in and have a listen. Don't tell them, and then just let them have a listen, and then just watch their reaction and if none of them are really you know doing any of that then i suppose it, it there's something there that it, it's failed or maybe the test subjects are wrong maybe they just only hear sound maybe they don't react that way in real life so you've got to look at the varieties of test subjects there's quite a lot of study goes into a uh, blind listening or something and blind listening, 
If you can see speakers on the ceiling, it's a dead giveaway. You shouldn't be able to. It should be hidden. I can't hide anything in there. I could if I wanted to. I could have a fabric come down in front of these speakers here and, and mostly some of this equipment here. I could have a built, put something, I could put some time and effort and build something, but it won't look good because fucking hell, the, the material is going to come out this far away from the speaker and it's going to drop down to the floor and it's going to make the room look very claustrophobic, <laughs> including the ceiling as well. It'll just make it look too small. So when you've got a dub station, it's, there's a lot of headroom above that ceiling as well as in the walls. they got quite a bit of headroom to hide those speakers. Some homes that are a little bit bigger, you know, work it all out and figure, yeah, we'll go with these type speakers. The The specs checks are okay. We tested them. Uh, they work okay. We'll put a cluster in. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, close to the up, on mounted on the walls. And then we'll put a fabric slightly in front of it and just boom. But the room is still wide and, and it still looks with the seating, it looks okay. But you take you take all that material down, woof, and you realize the room is a little bit more wider than it actually is. It's just a, it's just like some cinemas that I've been to, you know, some classic one, vintage ones downtown. And there's just aesthetics like false walls put in and the curtains that go around the screen. When that's all taken down, as it is now, because uh, it's derelict now, the cinema is it's only homes and caters for the pigeons. Uh, that's good. I like pigeons. Um, I can see all the brickwork and the shell of the room. It's just a square shell. But, you know, you can, if you've got a room that's really big, then you can do something with it. Cheap. Don't have to be expensive. Don't have to spend a million dollars, not even a quarter of a million, not even half a million. You don't have to even go that far. Just look around. Go to the, the next time you visit a, a supermarket or um, a DIY store and you just look at all the other materials that are hanging around and think, yeah, I know they say that could be used for a garden or whatever, but hmm, I could utilize that and put that in the room. Just because just they say it's for a garden doesn't necessarily mean it's so. <laughs> like if you want to have a floating floor, oh, that's piss easy. If I like to do one in this room, but this room is too small to even do one, but um. You think of, uh, you go down the the car yard, junk, junkyard, you know, the junkyard for the car, car spare parts. And you can get those springs. Uh, they go on the, the front and the back of the uh, vehicle. If you've got a few of those and you get them cheap, and if you work it out and then angle grind it and cut them to a certain, certain size, they've got a certain length, yeah? Um, you could put a few of those in a room. You have to do some, you know, lifting floorboards and yeah, you know, probably probably take about a week to do it. If you got the right crew or the right, you know, you could probably do it in about a week. So you could have a floating floor because those springs can, you know, a car weighs how much or a vehicle. Exactly. So those springs are going to hold that weight. You can put a few other things like rubber on it as well. And then and then that that floor, when you go in, you won't notice it. But I guess until you like, jump up and down very heavy on it, you'll probably notice it's springs. But when you walk in normally, you just you wouldn't notice it. But it is floating. It's on springs. Have a very thick MDF wooden floor. And then carpeted. And that would, um, but that's going a little bit too far, maybe. Because 
the chances are the vehicles traveling around outside and all that you don't feel much mechanical vibration and the only reason for is to reduce maybe a motorway or dual carriageway that's nearby and you might there might be some you know it might be picking up on rta or some sensors picking up vibration but they're there but you may not notice it but with instrumentation yeah then you just make a, a floating floor blah 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 doesn't have to be uh, expensive and windows oh they're a pain in the ass windows are You either you might as well just have the window ripped out and have the whole damn thing bricked up. <sighs> Otherwise, it's a it's not a big deal. If you got um, I mean, if I want to isolate the sound from those windows, but I got to have a window to open for crying out loud. I mean, come on. <clears throat> but in a cinema or dub stage, do you see any windows around? Uh, the only window I see is a port window for a projector. <laughs> That's the only window I see. <laughs> but um, you'd have to make. Oh, I would have to put something in that in the in the void over there. I'd have to put something at least about that thick, a, a thick layer, a thick sheet of MDF screwed up and all that and then put some well some absorbent material first so any sound coming from the windows plus all the round and gaps i will make make sure they're they're extra sealed um if i can inject any expandable foam in into a, a, a hole or a gap or anything i'll inject it so it will create a you know <coughs> And then seal it, and then and then silicon seal it, make it making sure. Of course, really got to be on the outside and going going over it, and just making sure all round near that window area, it's absolutely so there won't be any sound um, sound airwaves that can get into. And then just build, um, yeah, put put an M MDF very thick with some absorbent material so it's facing the window and then put another a bit of absorbent material uh so another another layer of mdf a second layer with a bit of absorbent material on one side so any you know by 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 the first layer i think it would oh gosh um depending on the sound frequencies depending on the sound frequency wavelength the wavelength for the frequencies. Anything like people talking outside with the first letter, I wouldn't even hear it. I wouldn't even hear them. Even if they were yelling at the top of their lungs, the only way I would hear them is if I got the door open to this room and the kitchen and I would hear sound wave coming through, partly through the window because it's the glass is only about, about that thick. Most most homes are going to be a, the glass is only going to be about that thick. You want glass that's going to be like soundproof and all that. It's got to be at least literally about that thick, and that's not cheap. <laughs> so you might as well just brick the bloody window up because bricks are cheap, <laughs> and other building materials are cheaper than buying some specialized glass that's six inches seven inches thick um that's what that galaxy theater the oro they test it if you watch one of those videos they demonstrate with a shotgun um blank shell in a shotgun and they fire it on one side and on the opposite side you can't even hear it the south how good the sound how soundproofing is between isolating the sound so that in the control room when they're mixing music they just hear literally the music on the speakers and they can do all the mixing and balancing and so forth if you still can vaguely hear it it's not going to work because you'll be thinking oh i can still detect them you know you got to totally isolate it mm. but it can be done cheap can be done cheap just got you know 
I could stick a load of acrylic on that window if I wanted to, get some large acrylic uh, and make it thick. They'll look, they'll look bloody hideous, it will. <laughs> um, I've got some acrylic that I'm going to stick on that projection port window. I've, I've had it for months and I've not even bothered yet to... Um, uh, I need to get find the. Uh, I need to find the. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, cordless drill. Um, uh, make sure I've got some decent drill bits, and then I've got a drill into the acrylic, into the into the positions where I can just um, use the same uh, screws and wall plugs. Uh, the same screws so it's a little bit wider the acrylic so it'll go over the, the hole uh and then um screw it up and then just put some sealant around it a little bit of silicon sealant and that peels off easy so if i had to clean it or anything um, it's not a big deal i could just take it off and then i'll just put it back up and then put another bit of sealant around it just to so in between the gaps so there's no air gaps even if it's a even if it's a a hairline of a gap sound can still find a way to get through you'd be surprised <laughs> but then i want to check that projector i want to get it on the bench i keep saying it I keep saying i want to get that on the bench open it up and just see what makes uh this weird worry sound noise on the inside it's a moving part obviously it's a moving part. Could be the fan. Could be the fan that's doing it. I see. It wouldn't take me long to figure it out. And then um, totally uh, isolate it. And then um, make that projector. Um, though it would still sound loud on the opposite side. But it's on this side. It's only a tiny little worry sound. And I've measured it with RTA. So I've actually seen the actual frequency it's doing. Um and that's measuring it up very close with the RTA with the microphone. Though when it's playing, something's ambient sound in this room. I don't even notice it. Unless it's one of those movies where it's very quiet suddenly. And then suddenly you get this bang sound, you know? You know what I mean? Let's be frank. I don't think anyone else would notice it. I notice it because um, I'm a trained listener. You know, that's why you shouldn't even have a video projector in the room. You shouldn't have them in the room. They should be opposite side because their fans are still going to be audible. Even sometimes uh, the, the Panasonic best ever. Um Sometimes one of the some discs in the that go in it, I can hear the acceleration, or I hear this weird um RPM speed. Yeah, you know, I can hear it. I think, well, why is that DVD making that sound? Or why is that huh. and then it, once it gets past that menu thing or whatever it is, and then it settles and then you know, then, then I don't notice it, but sometimes it can be. Uh that's why the laser disc players are in the kitchen. Because the laser displays would be too audible. There'll be, you know, one side of the room and anyone be looking down this way all the time, you know, because you can hear it. So laser displays here are virtually silent, just like the hunt for October. Invisible and silent. <laughs> aliens mostly mostly silent whereas i see all the uh you know most people haven't got the luxury sometimes or or they haven't not 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 the luxury they just don't have the um, i don't know they just don't have the thinking i suppose you know they got a room you know and then you've got another room and you think, well, might as well just use that for all the amplifiers and everything else. That anything that's 
a little bit noisy sounding. Uh, but even the storm audio sometimes, even the fan noise on that goes from 50% up to 75. Weird. It shouldn't do that. It doesn't even drop down after about 30 minutes. Come on. It's been cooling. Whatever it's been cooling down, it should have dropped down now automatically back to 50%. But no. Uh, lousy firmware software on that, I have to say. Does it work? Yeah. And you've got to turn the bloody thing off, leave it about maybe uh, half a minute and then turn it back on. Or maybe sometimes maybe five minutes and then switch it back on. And then, oh, it's back at 50 percent. And it'll probably stay that way. The Sony's on at the moment and heat's going upward. Feel heat and it's rising. Heat rises. Um, but at the moment, it's staying at 50 percent. It stayed at 50% the year last night. Um, I think a couple of other nights where I've had, I think I've had the, the, uh, the Sony and the Dolby CP 200 on. It stayed at, uh, I think even one day, it stayed a whole day nearly at 50%. It's bizarre. It's a software snag. It's got a mind of its own. <laughs> Uh, come on, Storm. Can you get some firmware to fix it? <laughs> or a variable user control so the user can, you know, because sometimes it's probably not even a legitimate heat rise. Because this thing, I can't, you know, it's got a little bit of warmth on the front of the panel there, but I'm sure if I opened it up, yeah, yeah. But first, I've got to take all that equipment off of it. <laughs> That's not easy. Huh. And then go and then, you know, leave it on for a few minutes and such. And then top, take the lid off and then put my hand inside and go in maybe with a thermal surface temperature thing and do some gay uh, testing and see how, how warm or, you know, and touch some of the components and, you know, like capacitors or anything that I think might be <coughs> to see how, how actually hot it is. Because seriously, the Dolby Cat 150s that go in these car in here or the CP200, um, I tell you, those cat cards, they get bloody hot. Uh, it says, warning, don't touch this, you know, very hot. And it is bloody hot. Um, I, I had a few faults on a Dolby S, Dolby SR um, thing, but I, I know what the fault is because it's a, a capacitor that failed. Um, in fact, it got a little bit caked, burnt, sizzled, um, and it was producing a very extreme bloody hot temperature. Uh, at the back of the uh, where the um, I think it's the I forgot what the IC is now. It's a it's an IC and it's a very cheap. I can get a replacement and a capacitor once I ID the capacitor because I've got a um, Dolby SR down here in this unit. I'm not even using it. If I want to use Dolby SR, I don't know why I can't use it. It's just a bit of a strange interruption between. Um, getting it to talk correctly on the CP200. Um, uh, it's just quicker just to take the A card out, take the A cards out, plug in the Dolby SR, and then I'm away and, I, and I'm ready to go. It only takes a few, it only takes less than a minute to do that. But it's, it's nice to have a, where it's on the formatting. Format zero five, yeah. Can a can a Trinov do uh, format zero five? Can it do pr prospector stereo? <laughs> can it do sense around? <laughs> can it do Dolby? Can it do Dolby EX? Dolby surround EX, and surround EX professional is totally different from the the home version. Home version only uses three channel. Professional one uses four channel. It's rather depressing, I, I think, you know. 
because uh, I've been doing overhead surrounding my 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 home cinema since oh long before a lot of you, because I was at UCI Tower Park. <laughs> Crikey! And it was never publicised. I mean, they didn't publicise it. Public just going in, just listening. Some people might oh be reacting. But that's going to be very few, very tiny few people would notice. You know, they've got to be like audio um, kind of, yeah, whatever, listening. God, but I tell you, this Aliens is an air, air buster. I don't need it at Moss, for Christ's sake, with fake, fake up mixing. I would be depressed. And it would just, it would just end up in a cat litter as, a load, as another load of rubbish 4K disc fail disc format. Just so they can moo, milk it. I swear, this aliens on PAL Laserdisc is pretty damn wow. It's got it's got like an almost grittiness to the the the, uh, the film itself. Brilliant transfer. Whoever, whoever the video engineer was, he knew how to do it. But whoever this, what was his name? Um, what's his name now? The one that hired by James Cameron. What's his name? Oh, let me think. Uh, uh, skip. His name's Skip Kimball. Um, well, he's made a a very terrible mess of those 4Ks. Oh, dear. If he's a colorist, I think he's overpaid and maybe possibly going colorblind because he shouldn't be anywhere near all this equipment if you're going to botch it up and then have mass product mass produced just so cameron or disney can get a little bit greedy oh crikey that's like i know it's like victimizing you walk past the beggar on the street but you don't know if they're legit or if they're faking it you know personally i wouldn't be begging on the street if i was down i wouldn't be out on the begging on the street with my cat begging I'll, I'll seek relatives and such you know i know something's down and i i need you know i can't understand why people just don't go looking for you know everyone's got relatives and you know well, but yeah you know, that's like disney being disney and james cameron begging on 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 these blu-ray sites when their their items are uh, advertised and oh it's restoration don't believe that word restoration for one moment that's total bullshit unless they got a video to prove that that is a restoration and they gone through a process that shows what they gone through right up to the mixing have you ever seen one i haven't see a little snippet of james cameron on a dub stage on that abyss thing and he, he said oh, he's at a uh, Park Row uh, Studios in New Zealand. That's obviously where they re remixed the fake Atmos. But, no, I mean, uh, it's like it's like that. This milking thing's been going on even with laser disc. And some of the, I mean, the THX AC3 laser disc doesn't even look great. 
it's a little bit technically video flawed. Whereas this PAL laser disc one is like, wow. Why can't I go? Why can't they use whatever, whoever the video engineer is? Why can't? Well, he's probably retired now, obviously. Um, maybe. Uh, I would say very retired. Um, why can't they use, you know, so obviously they got it spot on. It's still laser disc uh, quality grade, but you know, if it, if it had high definition, crikey, this 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 aliens would have been absolutely knock your socks off with high definition. But if they had you had high definition around the time, because the video coloring transfer is pretty good. It's, it does have a teeny, but. Uh, end credits they got a nice white white uh white uh, end credits whereas on the other transfers they got a little bit of color mori uh, mori rainbow color slight little effect i can see going on in the uh, in the whites um but this is a good transfer and but weird later pal laser disc transfers started to kind of take a go downhill sort of thing where they had this very weird color look on later PAL laser disc transfers it's like it's using a different video engineer or different techniques and it's like uh, I don't know I prefer the NTSC versions <laughs> they don't have that weird image color um, issue that's going on with uh, some bright colors um, and such um damn a strawberry i uh oh, strawberry um oh, wow it's nice see ripley she's in she's in she's in with the alien where Ripley is standing there um, with this metal grill grid floor, this metal grid floor um, on the EAC3. It, it's got it's got a technical video floor that I can see. It's, yeah, because of the angle, the lines and everything, it's got a bit of a bit of a technical floor there going on. But on the PAL version, wow, pretty decent. <laughs> hmm. uh, I don't need it. I don't need it. Your original trilogy upscaled and all that, and you know, Christ's sake. That's weird with some of these original trilogy people because most of them are hanging around on YouTube. Most of them are hanging around probably right now, uh, hanging around on Blu-ray.com and they, they're too scared to even show their face. Some of them are just too chicken. <laughs> like what you think, your special case, like, oh gosh, golly, you know, everybody can go out and get hold of all this video tech. Tech, not technology equipment for crying out loud well they you, you think you think you think if if, if you think the uh the cops are gonna bust your door down just because you're doing transfers that are i don't really care if it's illegal because i, I i'd rather buy an illegal copy and buy any more of that crap that's legitimate studio oh that's not it's it's cash cow it's cash cow. But I can't, you know, show yourselves. Show yourselves. Hold your head up high with pride. Crikey, I've had so many heart attacks, so many blackouts. Then you've had hot dinners. I hold my head up high. I speak my I speak my I speak my mind. I'm not gonna hide behind the uh hide behind the seat and just like, oh, I'm already a 
ranting about this fucking Blu-ray fucking disc. Oh, fucking hell, it's fucking awful. No, fuck it. You, you go out every day, you think, oh, I, I know some people sometimes, oh, don't, don't, don't video me. What do you mean don't video you? Have you seen how many bloody cameras there are around up on these lampposts in a shopping centre? We mean don't video you. <laughs> even, 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 the, even the Secret Service themselves have bloody videoed what, because you never know, some of them might turn rogue. Yeah. That's why they make these movies, don't they? Because you think the possibility of some of them, yeah. And then they're screen tested all the time just to make sure they're um, polygraphed and uh, make sure they're, you know, yeah. Mm, yeah mm. Bloody hell. Even, 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 you know, even this thing, I'm pretty sure, I'm pre pretty sure Edward Snowden would probably say, yeah, it's sending Wi Fi signal. <laughs> this little device that looks at the, the the, uh, the the picture, uh, the colour. It's a little. It's like a little webcam. You put it basically on top of the TV, but I put it on the floor now. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it on the floor because I find it very distracting when it's on top of the TV. It's like it looks like a bloody webcam stuck on my bloody OLED. Um, I'm pretty sure it's got a Wi-Fi in the a chip in there, and it's sending a signal to any anything that's Wi-Fi connected in 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 the home and then sending other data like oh this people like these people like watching this movie or these t and sending information i wouldn't be surprised i wouldn't be surprised at all okay let them let them let them let them, let them look at what i'm watching laser disc mostly <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> uh. High and low. High, high, silver. Away. High, high, silver. Check, I'll check. And you, Mr. Bass Loss. Oh, and you, and you. Well, haven't you heard, Captain? I I'm in charge of what? By, by all absurdity. <sighs> oh. I'd like to have a nice aesthetics in the room. I'd like to have a nice aesthetics, but oh, the aesthetics I would like uh, um, would be, uh, yeah, if the room was large enough, if the room was just a little bit larger. Uh, I could just strip the back wall down. I could strip the back wall down and do do a sort of feature, do a feature on that back wall. Um, but it have to be very very thin. Can't can't make the materials too thick. Otherwise, uh, even though the speakers themselves are pretty deep. Oh dear. Anyway. 
maybe maybe uh maybe I'll take a picture and then put put it in sections on the back wall picture yeah that that would kind of look interesting like on paper or something or glossy paper yeah and then just stick it stick it on the back wall there and it will look exactly like what what I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll just oh dear yeah Oh, why are we so wrapped up in why 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 audio? Why why so wrapped up in audio? I mean the picture is only one image front focal up there up in front. That city world thing where they split the image. Oh, if I wanted to go and get a video splitter and just divide the image into three sections uh so it's going along the side wall and the in front it wouldn't look right it'll look a little weird because it's it's, it's very square flattish it'll look very strange uh it's really got to be videoed it filmed natively uh, even still if it was projected it looks very very strange but interesting but a bit strange because how we see things in you know it's totally uh yeah but that's how we see things isn't it I'm looking in front of me. I can see the video thing and I can see behind me just as if it were a, a mirror or use a piece of plastic and I can reflect light onto it and the image comes onto the camera. So it looks, it, so this camera is looking at the back and now it's looking in front. You can see most of the aliens. Just a bit of plastic. And use other other formulas as well. Other thought there's other, plenty of other formulas out there that that are got that go underneath my radar screen, and then I come across it, and I think, all oh, right, I understand, I understand that. That's pretty clever. I think, um, hmm, I wonder if I could use that. Like, um, maybe yeah. Just thinking, plastic. Hmm. like LCD screens and such because uh, they do an LCD screen now they do they do something now that's a that's just like clear plastic and you get an image uh, an image into it wow I wonder if that's inspired from a movie or maybe uh, what's in what's shown in the movie uh, is inspired from something else. But they can only do it with CGI then. They can't actually do it in practice. Uh, so. Mm.
boys are being fed? Why are you boys are being fed? Crikey. Kitties that want feeding every every ten minutes. Wow, that is a brilliant combination of model, large practical, camera, camera setup, lighting, wow, editing, wow, storyboard, storyboarding. <laughs> to create a Light visual sound movie show. Wow. What you want? We, we want to lick that magic. Go on. Ah. <sighs> Oh. oh, lick. Have a Kit Kat. <laughs> oh. Lick me, lick me. Lick me, lick me. Yeah, lick that. Yeah, lick that. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, go on. Lick me, lick me. Lick me now. Lick me, lick me. Whoa, 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 whoa. You coming in for some licking bear? Lick me, lick me, lick me now. Oh. You want some of that bear? Oh, magic's almost licked it. Lick me, lick me. All right, all right, careful, magic. You got it all over your face, Mr. Madge. Magic, you got it all over your face. Lick me, lick me. All right, lick me, lick me, lick me now. You know what she did? Lick me, lick me, lick me now. Oh, lick me, lick me. All right. Oh, gosh, gosh, magic. All right, you go and clean your face, all right, and your paws. You, you lick that out. You're really licking it out. Oh, go on. Lick me, lick me. Right there, not into licking. No, a little bit more civil.
you really enjoy that licking? Lick me. Lick me. <laughs> hey. You had a good licking. Mostly. Mostly licking. <laughs> is going low. CHX magic. Recorded in Dolby Stereo in selected theatres. Um, this is a selected theatre. Wants to hug, wants to hug on. <laughs> wow. Ow! Now, 
He's like he's like the guy in Terminator. We gotta come with me if you wanna live. I'm saving you from the xenomorphs. No! <laughs> I am a xenomorph. I have come here to kill Ripley. Wow, I was told her she's here. Ooh, quick, let's, let's go, let's go, Ripley. The xenomorphs. Now! Ow! Wow. better and better. Drop 
shit playing. I get it reverberating around in THX. Oh. Oh.
Brilliant. Oh. I mean, if I was going to class my home cinema like uh, high end, well, it is high end. I'd have to class it something like 900 zillion, 999 zillion. Yeah. Yeah. 900, 900, 999 zillion pound. Yeah. Uh, it's down to the thinking. Gosh, I, I can look at a lot of things here and look at like look at all these different aspects of way to manipulate uh, sound frequency and exploit it. <sighs> so so much this this how lazy this has got so much potential it makes the Dolby 4K Atmos look like a toy. <laughs> I guess you think I might buy it, hmm? the 4K, hey? I guarantee it'll go in the cat litter. It, it would only last probably about a minute playing time with some of the Atmos whatever and then i'm going to notice how fake and crap and up mixing near field mix it is and that's going to get ejected and it'll just go straight into raw cat litter uh, 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 grow a brain and get a laser this play for crying out loud 4K is not everything, you know. If I thought it was, then I would I wouldn't be bitching and moaning about it. Oh. Oh. Uh, they got a lot of bullshitters out there, all these insiders, a lot of bullshitters. <laughs> because obviously they're getting a little bit of money on the side, aren't they? And of course if, if everything plummets and collapses, they won't get that little, you know, I guess, they, I guess they'll have to go out stocking um, food on shelves at supermarkets then, wouldn't they? Have to get a real job, wouldn't they? <coughs> wow. There is so much wild potential. I like that sound effect. Though. That's a pretty good sound effect. That worked pretty damn good back in, back you know, back in the cinema. It made you look up. Makes you, especially the opening, the very opening with the, you know, after the Fox 20th century. And oddly, the, uh, there's not a 20th century Fox fanfare on the start of this Aliens uh, pressing. Um, <coughs> there isn't a, you know... Um, but, you know, straight when it gets into the James Horner score, it's like you hear that music sound. You, know, you kind of like looking around behind me over my shoulder in the center at the uh, Gaumont screen number two downtown. Thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. And it, it the way it sounded, it sounded like it was moving from the back and then moving along the side walls. But it's just a Hass illusion. It's just a time delay effect and such. But, wow, it certainly was pretty neat. Um, and then it comes more on screen and sort of thing. Then, yeah, it was pretty neat. Hey. So you got another cat for an alien, alien cat, you know. Wow. 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 Hey, hey. 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 There. Come around this way, sweet. There. Hey, there. Like you guessed yesterday, didn't you? 
Yeah, you liked you liked uh, like sitting on his lap. No, don't get any ideas, Bear. I know what you're thinking. I know I know what you're thinking, Bear. Oh. Come on, off of there, stop knocking things over. Ay, 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 ay. <clears throat> Whoa, he's back up there again. Oh, he likes to look at the air condition. Oh, yeah, I hear that sound. So I direct the laptop to a certain angle, and I hear the sound reflection on the laptop. Yeah, the fan now sound reflecting on there onto my left side not on my right side it'll only go to my left side if i do that there no because it's got to be angled slightly behind me and it's got to be at the right degree angle and then it catches the sound reflection won't it there yeah that's how good this thx cinema is it's a it's a thinking it's a thinking THX man's lab because you go add the real thing you go add the real you know everyone's got THX posters and such or THX wall plaques uh, THX clip speaker or whatever but they haven't got the actual real real thing itself it's on eBay you gotta know where to find it. You know, fantastic THX and where to find them. And you can have a, a feel like Ripley's in your room. Mostly. <laughs> in it right there. Yay. Look at that bloody xenomorph. She's big, you know. Oh, she's angry. Whoa. Please don't barbecue my eggs. <laughs> well, xenomorph bear, eh? Whoa, xenomorph. Boys have been fed. Feed you later. Uh, not now. I only fed you a few hours. I only fed you an hour ago. You had your what's it? I'll feed you again at nine o'clock. Or maybe ten o'clock. Give you a bit of feeding then. Uh, I've got to take my medication magic. Yeah.
she asked the other thing in aliens mostly. I can see what I can see what's going on, on everything that's going on. I'm working on it. Bear, will you stop being a knocking things over? It's annoying. Come on. Come on. No. Come on. Knocking things over, aren't you? Okay, stop. Now calm down after. It's just greedy. You overfeed them and then uh, they get sick, don't they? Overfeed them. Yeah, I'm watching the aliens. I can see what's going on in this scene here. Yeah, I can see what's going on. On that there, or that bit there, that scene there, I can see what's going on there. Even that bit there, there. I can see what's going on. I can see what's going on. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Uh, it's doable. It's very doable. Yeah, there's a lot in there. You can you can make an alien. You know, everyone's seen it. Oh, how many times at uh, maybe a Prince Charles cinema in London, huh? Oh crikey! It's always the same thing. Why not try something different, a different edge? I can see it right. I can see. I can see it staring right at me, thinking, "Well, how can you do that?" Well, that's simple. Need a bit of collaboration with a few, few others. Oh, they're having a cat fight. For Christ's sake. Wait, what's I'm not having any cat fighting, all right? I'm not having any cat fighting. You're, you are, you have been an aggressive little kitten, yeah, with magic, since day one. Come on, relax. Relax, Bear. Come on, relax. Not having any cat fighting. That wasn't cat fighting. That wasn't playing. That was that was sheer sheer spiteful aggression, Bear. That's not that's not to be tolerated. It's not to be tolerated. Come on, calm down. Come on, calm down. You, you do not like tuxedos, do you? you don't, you're, you're a tuxedo hater, aren't you? I guess you're a black cat hater as well. Right? Yay. Okay. 
Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You're not calm. You're not relaxing. You're not relaxing there. Not relaxing. Yeah. Relaxing. No, you don't relax, do you? You stay in there. Stay in there. You calm down. Let magic calm down. He's a bit. He's a bit. He's a little bit. Uh, te feels terrorized by you, bear. Yeah, so much alien, aliens mostly, mostly potential. It's plastered all over there. I mean, there's one thing I like to try. Where is it? I mean, yeah, there's one thing I like to try. Where's it? Yeah, that bit there. Whoosh. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Yeah. I'd like to try that. Uh, that'd be that'd be pretty cool if that bat would. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. That is clever. That is pretty clever. It looks all I mean, when it's all filmed and edit and then editing, it looks all like one shot. Yeah, but it it, it 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 takes weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks to put just a few seconds together. <laughs> Wow. Or, or actually months, actually, because when you film and da-da-da, then you've got to wait until you get to the editing process, which would be many months away. Oh, yeah, flipping that. And then the putting the sound, and then coming up with the sound design, and then putting the sound edit sound effects together and then putting then and then putting the uh, mixing together and then the film school wow What's he up to now? God, yeah. Oh, you're a creepy bear. Looking at your creepy cat.
no, you're not. Doze over. No, come on, out behind the other one. Come on. Oh, come on, calm down. You want to go out? You're going to be a good kitty cat. You're not going to. You're not going to wind up magic now, are you? Want to go out? Where are you off to? Oh, magic! You want to come in? You want to come in? Probably not sure, are you? When am I going to fucking put these cables through the fucking hole? Seriously. Oh, fucking hell. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cables. Hundreds, literally. To watch aliens, mostly. If you want to get more technical, actually, it's thousands of cables. Thousands. Yeah, you because know, audio files. Oh gosh, let's let's start counting every little strand of bit of cable, wouldn't they? So if it's earth cabling and such, and they'll start counting you know, each each little strand <laughs> because they're audio files, aren't they? <laughs> of course, their cable will cost probably one meter for uh, probably cost half a million just for one meter of cable. <laughs> Cracking audio files. Oh, they crack me up. Quite a bit of kilowatt on tap, haven't we, Magic? On tap. Tap. Yeah. THX tap. Theatre alignment program. Plenty of kilowatt on theatre alignment program. Should make this a theme park ride. <laughs> oh dear. Wow. LCR Dolby Stereo, wow. Wow. It's too bad, too bad. The, 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 you, could, you, you hear it kind of, kind of, you know, sloshy sort of sounding. You know, so it's not perfect on webcam, is it? It's not, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. It's not perfect. It doesn't pick up the sound very clear. You get a general idea, but. You can just theorise on it if you want to. I couldn't care less. 
Yeah, I've got a THX 3417 in the home, so I can't help it if all the uh, all the kind of upper class home fears, the upper class ones, they're, they're not even the high end elite, but the upper class ones and maybe the elite ones, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less, you know. Mostly people in their thirties. Oh gosh, they wouldn't know what THX THX if if if, it, if, it, if it, they wouldn't know what it is if it fell on top of them. They think, huh? What? Huh? What? What? What's that? They wouldn't know. They haven't experienced it. They experienced it. Pity, really. It was really, it was really go, it was really cooking, it was really sizzling. And George Lucas had to go a little bit potty, didn't he? Somewhere there and somewhere within the program, it came, it derailed. <sighs> Should have stuck with the THX Laserdisc program and cinema only. That was the two best things going for it. THX VHS tapes. Oh, come on. Really? Seriously? Are you kidding? The damn things are too noisy. They wear out. You know, if you were into an action scene like a certain scene in Aliens, you'd be watching that scene over and over and over and over again. And then when you play it to your friends or guests or get together so when it gets up to that scene the video quality starts getting all noisy and loads of lines all over the image because it's been the tape it's just like having sandpaper and you sand it on a certain area of the surface and then you look at it and you can tell it's still very good on this side and this side of the set but except for here because it's been worn down so much and that's that's what happens with vhs tape <sighs> Laser? Oh, crikey. It doesn't even touch the surface. It's just reading what, what is there. And if there's a tiny little scratch or blank, it still keeps on playing. Doesn't doesn't have, unless it's a very, very serious scratch. A minor one, even a minor one on a Blu-ray 4, 4K disc. Oh, you might as well then throw that disc in the bin because it's just going to pixelate. And freeze up all the time. You can't play that disc now. You've got to throw it away. You can't even buff it out for Christ's sake. Well, I've had a serious scratch mark on a laser disc one time. It took a bit of a technique, a very weird technique, of using sellotape and a, a very hard surface, very kind of smooth sort of surface that I could rub, press into. So I had to put a few layers of sellotape and then do this rubbing pressing down sort of thing and then peeling it kind of like waxing the chest sort of thing or the hair sort of thing waxing yeah i had to do that um took about a few days and then i managed to get this this very odd scratch mark that was only a few only a only a tiny few millimeters but every time the laser would come into contact where that scratch the it would freeze up Freeze, pause the image, and then it would go. No, kind of like. It'll make that sound uh, because it's reading ones and zeros, ones and zeros. Um, yeah, that was on one of the PAL laser discs of Willow. I think it was on the end of side one or the beginning of side two. I can't remember. I'll have to look at the disc and look at the surface because I could still vaguely be able to see where it is, but it manages to get past with a few little interruptions in the video signal, but minor, but it manages to get past it. If that were on 35 mil film, oh, crikey. Um, you have to be very delicate about doing it because you could really make it messy. But yeah, but on a blue, on a blue disc 4k, no, forget about it. You got to throw it in the bin. Because the pit, the pits on it are too damn small. That's why I think Blu-rays are crap disc format, including HDVD. Bloody, oh, I think DVD sometimes is a little bit more durable. Uh, durable.
I've had a, I've had a DVD disc where it had that issue one time and managed to managed to fix it. I could have bought another disc that would have been cheaper, but yeah, Blu-ray discs. For, I mean, 4K, the 4K crappy. You don't want to even start messing. You just got to throw it in the dustbin and get another one. <laughs> That's where they make the money on the milking. Four K crappy disc format. Oh. Four K crappy near field mixes. Oh. What is the bear? That cat bear has got a very strange attitude with knocking things over. He, he really has any magic. He knocks it over. He totally does it on purpose. It's not just accidentally doing. He's doing it on purpose. He's got a strange. He's a strange character, aren't you, Bear? Yes. I know, I know magic. I know. Honestly, yesterday, I, I mean, I play, I play to my my cousin and her husband. I play a, I play a theatrical mix laser disc. I wouldn't want to put a bloody crappy 4K on just because it looks like a pig's lipstick on an image with crappy near field atmos. Seriously. Oh. oh. This format that says it was going to do it all. And then it, 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 it just, at the end of the day, I suppose once they gra got hold or grabbed the market of people, then they just pull a fast one, don't they? They just pull the rug out under our bloody feet of all this cow, cash cow, milk in Atmos crap. As everyone now thinks Atmos is a total legit, a legitimate bloody format. God, there's, there, there's so many fakes out there. It's unbelievable. Atmos. Fucking hell, look at that. Aliens, fucking open map. Look at that. Bloody hell. Flipping that. Go and get that on bloody 4K. Yeah, they got the technology, the technology. 4K, what a load of rubbish. <laughs> See, I can make I can make this eight, I can make this perfect. I can make it perfect. This is pretty it's brilliant. I wonder if there's a way that you could spray a high definition spray 
onto laser disc and make it look wow. Then I, then I wouldn't need those bloody 4K discs. I could just start throwing them in the dustbin. <laughs> Near field mix, be gone. Get 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 some of that anti spray, you know, anti four K spray like Brad, and spray those four K discs. <laughs> be gone with near field, near field mix. Be gone. <laughs> yeah, you know, most people got rooms bigger than my room, and yet. They got these little clips. They got these little JTR speakers. Oh, for crying out loud. They just spent tens of thousands on JTR RTJ speakers when they could have gone eBay and brought, brought the real brought the real McCoy, the real deal for less. But like I say, eBay USA is not very good at the moment. eBay USA is crying out loud. Just two pairs of the same speakers that I got behind the screen. 4673As. $1,600. What? That's just two crying out. My, my entire five screen costs less than that. Prices are just ridiculous on eBay USA. But they got a better selection than they have in the UK. Crikey, there's hardly any JBL cinemas, cinema speakers in the UK on eBay at the moment. Completely dried up. Because, oh, until some of the cinemas close down, some of the cinemas, and then they'll, then they'll have, oh, probably a few thousand JBL speakers in a warehouse that they got to sell. And they'll be cheap. And that's probably not going to be for quite a while. You got you got to look up at high and low. You got to look at eBay France, eBay Germany, eBay Italia, Italy, eBay Japan. Crying out loud! Because somewhere under the radar, there's some JBL, very cheap. I can't understand why. It's, it's a bit strange, though, um, because you've got to be very careful using the power. That um, Having kilowatt amplifiers um, for uh, home theatre speakers that are only they're designed, they're, their power, power rating is usually maybe 250. You know, if that, if that, amplifier were to malfunction it's going to send raw a raw output signal very high very raw uh, you know unless you've got a panic switch to turn off those amplifiers really quick because uh, it'll only take um it'll only take so many seconds until it damages now the the mid-range driver the hf horn or maybe the whole speaker itself and you've got to replace all the parts. <coughs> it's very rare an amplifier would go go that way, but it can. It's best, I suppose, to have a fuse, fuses placed in line 
between the between the amplifier and the speaker. So you got fuses and test those fuses under under very rigorous testing to make sure that they do blow. Yeah, um, because they, they got to go. They got to blow out very quickly sort of thing. Uh, and then you then, you know, you've got a faulty amplifier and you think, wow, that fuse prevented uh, that speaker from getting totally damaged. But rarely, very rare, it would happen. But it can. So amplifier is going to be turned up to max and it's going to send out... If it was set over, but then it could go faulty. Maybe even if it was at a low set and it could still go faulty and do some strange. So it's probably good to have a fuse. But which fuses? Oh, crikey. Which fuses? I find they got fuses for these JBL control ones and uh, most, of, most or some JBL control series. They got a fuse in there, but it's like a little light show most of the time when you see it glowing, but that's not that's not there for the intent for a light show. Uh, it's, it's getting too much signal in, and it starts that fuse starts to get a glowing uh, kind of orangey color, or and you, you can see the appearance of it coming from the port kind of light level. But uh, no, that could I could potentially wreck the uh, bass driver and the you know if it if all the all the tweeter mostly the tweeter because there might be too much build up of um energy in the uh going to the tweeter because the passive crossover can only filter so much can't do it all and there'll be still some signal that's going to find its way in and it's going to uh go over the tolerance level of the voice coil of that tweeter and then it's going to burn burn out and all you have to do is replace the diaphragm put a new diaphragm on the tweeter and then the tweeter is brand new again but you got to check the amplifier what went wrong what was going what funny with the amplifier i think checking fuses a audio science review i don't think there's much audio science review technical data with actual videos that show actual practicality it's just too much talk typing well actually it's not talk it's typing it's just reading text and thinking well that's pretty useless where's the bloody video for crying out loud needs uh, to see what how many fuses what type and what voltage loads are going into this speaker? What uh, pink noise, sine wave tone, anything to do simulation. And then once it goes, and then SPL levels, monitoring the speaker at a one meter distance and RTA as well, uh, to, uh, connected to amplifier to see what the, what the tolerances are, what's going on. Because chances are it's probably going to damage your hearing before it's going to end up knackering the speaker because it's going to be horrendously bloody over loud and it will knacker your hearing before the, the speaker gets knackered <sighs> what's the point of that you know there's so many ways to uh, do it so many ways just use the loudspeaker management crossover system and experimental so many ways so many ways even a behringer dcx can go completely can malfunction and it will output a signal in then sent to the amplifiers and if those amplifier levels are set to maximum Oh, it's going to knack it. It's going to knack of those um, speakers. Uh, 
Uh, well, it's only a few hours till 10.59, 10.58, 10.58. And I'll stop, I'll probably stop this video before then. And I'm going to put on Titanic. At uh, 10.58. Yeah, it should it should be about I should I should have uh, I should have the timing right I hope I think I have I, I think I checked it a couple of times to see if it'd be about the right time to would be about an hour and I forgot how I forgot, I forgot what but I forgot what the actual hour is uh, how long hour 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 uh, hour and a half I think or something. Uh, um. Oh, I feel lousy. I don't feel good. I feel like less than 90. I feel less than a very low 90%. I feel like more like a very low 80%. Oh. Yeah. Too bad I don't allow get-togethers in my TH. I don't allow it. I don't allow it. Trust no one, Mr. Mulder. Oh, that's a good one. The X-Files. There were bees, corn crops. Wow. When was the last time I played that on DTS Laserdisc? Yeah. Let me stop that. Let me stop the aliens. Uh, probably just put a little bit of, of bees, corn crops. <laughs> uh, put it through the Storm Audio on uh, optical number two. So I'll just get that set up. Oh, be on the other Laserdisc player because the, um, the optical lead. Yeah, there's it's just not enough. You know, the Storm Audio and the Trinov, utter load of bloody rubbish. There's just simply not enough. Even the JBL, even an Anthem. I mean, at the most, uh, most receivers, processors, they've only got about two or three optical inputs. <sighs> Total waste of time. I've got to send opticals into other processors and then, but I can't even do that on the Denon. There's Denon, the Denon, the Denon is fucking useless. Doesn't have an optical output. It's got three optical inputs. So I could, uh, I could utilize the uh, three optical inputs for, what what players I'm running, what film show presentation that's going to be here in the THX cinema. Uh, and then I could have diverted the, uh, the, the output from there and then come down into the, on one of the inputs. And so I'd still only have two inputs there on the optical here, but I'd have three up there, but that would still, that would give me a total of five optical inputs then. But I'm, I'm, I'm limited to about um only three inputs here so one input occasionally used for the toshiba hdvd but hdvd rarely gets played i might as well uh bum, bum, bum. i've got three laser disc players so that's three opticals um sometimes i might use an opt optical on the panasonic because i think Ah, screw the HDMI. I'm not interested in the HDMI this week. Uh, I'd rather have to switch it over to optical. And sometimes when playing those crappy Atmos titles, I'm thinking, why is it not showing Atmos? Oh, I'm on optical input. Of course, I'm not on HDMI. Because the signal is only carried on HDMI. It's not carried on optical because it'll only resort to... Uh, 5.1 or 7.1, uh, um, I think. 
don't think it can go 7.1. I think it can. Yeah, yeah, I think it can go 7.1. But it won't do, yeah, because there's just not enough going through that optical. But sometimes I like to use the optical. Most home theatres don't use it, sadly. You know, they, sadly, they haven't got a laser disc player, so they've got no use to using it. No use for it. They think their HDMI is perfect. Well, that's been a total waste of bloody time, isn't it? Bloody going from HDMI to 1.8 or whatever the bloody exit is to 2.0 or 2.1, whatever. It couldn't care less. Just so, basically, it's like a hose pipe that someone basically explains it. It's like having a small tube and it's only going to have a little bit of dribble of water coming out. And then you use a hose pipe. Yeah, then you get a bit more. Then you probably use an actual fire hydro one. Then you've got a whole lot coming of information of coming out through the cable. Because, yeah, it's condensing it. It's condensing and compressing it down. And I thought the bloody, I thought this format, this format thing was supposed to be the best ever. And yet it's, I've been, it's been bullshitting me for years, bullshitting everybody. God, fucking hell. I wouldn't even believe if it's outputting more data with a 2.1. I wouldn't even believe it. It's still going to be a bloody near field mix for crying out loud. <sighs> so where's the X Files? I think it's on the shelf. I think it's on the shelf. Okay. Load it up on the other laser disc player. Oh. Oh, I'm going to load it up. Go and get her out, get the X files. There are bees, corn crops. It's got a good sound mix on that X files one. It's got a good. Uh, Got a good sound team mix on it. I mean, it's almost better than Dolby Atmos, I swear. It's almost better than bloody Dolby Atmos. Next files are up there somewhere. There were bees, corn crops. <laughs> there were bees, corn crops in THX. Bees and corn crops. Maybe a kitty cat or two.
there are bees and DTS corn crops. Bees and corn crops. Bees and corn crops. Okay, I've got to go to the other place at this front. Oh, I've got to go and switch the other one off, otherwise I'm going to activate it if I to use the remote. DTS signal will come up in a moment. Uh, no, it's probably the wrong optical. Uh, it's not optical two. Uh, it's probably the. Uh, okay, try optical number one. Optical number one. Yeah, it's on optical number one. Wow. Bees and corn crops. What they call that an airbuster? Damn, that is deep. That is flipping low. Wow, my goodness. Flipping that. What do they call that? An airbuster?
Okay, it's not the fader, it's not the fader on my end. Let me check the um, the storm audio's uh, output sound, sound mixing things because uh, I think I'm hearing a little bit of um, digital uh, noise clipping, and that's on the uh. That's not on. That's not on my system. It's on the. It's on the encoding. I did. It's like crimson tide yesterday. Frickin' heck. The, the levels were so close, up to zero dB on some of the very dynamic theatrical mix output levels. They were up to near zero dB for crying. Once you reach zero dB, that's it. You got nowhere else to go. That's it. I think those levels should have been a little bit. You know, I think it was just a little bit too. A little bit too much, but phew, ripping that. You want to hear Crimson Tide here in theatrical THX on a real THX sound system. You wet yourself. You don't need 150 dB. You don't need that 150 dB record breaking thing. You know what I mean? You don't need that because that's just that's just plain absurd because you're just going to damage your hearing completely. Sign this ledger of the waiver before you come in. What? No thanks. <laughs> I value my hearing and stupidity, but flipping that. Let me check this because I think DTS are, are sometimes notorious. But um, it's it's like a digital uh, little sort, of, but it's only on one bit. Of, it's not all the time. It's only now and then on one little. Okay, mixed levels. Um, uh, da, 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 VU, let me VU meters. Okay, let me have a look. I'm not sure you'd be able to see. Maybe, maybe you'd be able to see the reflection. So. I oh, know that level there was about minus. I wasn't close to zero. Oh, I don't do that again. No, I was freeze this in the amber. It's in the amber level. It's probably even if it was playing at a very low level, it's probably on the. Uh, probably got there on the mix or on the offering uh, the the little crackle sounds that occasionally um not just on dts sometimes okay uh i've noticed them on ac3 laser disc or, or not ac3 laser disc uh, uh dolby digital dvd uh dts laser disc uh, poly 13 armageddon uh huh and it's a little crackle sound um, and funny enough, there's a little been a little crackle sound on the right surround channel during the uh, the, the the start up of the engines on the Apollo rocket, um, and in one in, in a wide shot where it sees the air blowing, you know, and it, that guy's wearing a coat and it, his jacket moves with the air, the amount of bass, bass, yeah. Um, and there's a little kind little crackle sound that I can hear uh, between couple of seconds or so and it's a little crackle sound you can play your volume at a very low level and you'd still hear it it's on it's in and that that little crackle sound sort of thing has gone generationally through well from laser disc dts laser disc over to dvd uh be it dts dvd dolby digital dvd um i'm not sure if there was a very early early version um blu-ray that still had it and i think on one of the later versions they fixed it because someone obviously noticed it and then they corrected it and then it wasn't there anymore yeah and it took that many years until someone noticed it oh, for crying out loud 
don't they proof listen to these bloody things thoroughly after they mix it just make sure there's no there's no artifacts there uh, sort of thing anyway it's okay <laughs> Okay. I mean, they're in DTS the first time down at Tower Park in 93, Jurassic Park with the experimental overhead. Um, that was pretty neat. That was, I was with Tower, I was, I was there, I was there for a while and then I left. Um, bloody hell, but pop, popping down into, because they had the Jurassic, I think it was, uh, I think it was interlocked between five, screen five and six. Probably interlocked in some of the other smaller, uh, 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 some of the other screens that had the DTS because I think they only had a few DTS decoders, um, in in each auditorium or each each um, projection booth. That was, that was pretty wild, you know. Yeah, the flying disc overhead. Need Atmos. <laughs> Introduction. I move past that. There are bees, corn crops. They should, have, they should have done a bee flying around with this 20th century fox. You know, should have done a bee flying around it. <laughs> there were bees, corn crops. I saw a happy bee last uh, yesterday. That was nice to see a happy bee. Humble, bumble, bumble bee. Wow. opening an air buster there were bees corn crops primitive man of Texas wow pretty fine that's a PC bees and corn crops Wow. What a flipping dynamic range on this. Oh. Well, we better come up with a plan. Oh. Well, we better come up with 
Wow. Scenario that we never planned for. Got this sound rehearsal. Because it's a different mix to Crimson Tide. Holy shit balls. Let's just check uh, hang on, let's check the uh what's it levels on the uh storm again. Uh go over to I think I can turn the STDS off at the moment. I'll turn it off. I'm so not don't, don't need to be running. Let's turn the CP200 off. Whoa. I think I know what's going on here. Because I was using aliens earlier and... Storm Audio's got these little things. Yeah, I'll turn that down back to there. That's better. Okay. Save it. Okay. Okay. Wow. The bees, crops, helicopters. Well, I like that wind sound blowing around. See, the helicopter's up front, and you just got this wind sound. But, but realistically, in the faint backgrounds, in the distancing, with all those skyscrapers, there will be sound reflections vaguely now and then, uh, very weird sounds of a helicopter sound reflections uh, on the other buildings uh, behind or to the side, slightly off screen sort of thing. There'll be, there'll be, you know, laws of physics. <laughs> nice bit coming up the helicopter. <laughs> wow, don't need that, Moss. Check the sound levels on the surrounds. Check the EQ level. Okay. Mm, probably take the levels up a little bit on this one. Take it up, it's minus 17 Q bandwidth, one kilohertz, no, 900 hertz. Let's take, let's take it up a bit. 17, 17, very carefully. Uh, 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 six, four, four, that's okay, it's three dB up. Maybe give it about, yeah, give it about uh, 4 dB. Take it for 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah, take it up 4 dB. So copy that. Just make sure it's all checked on the, oh, got to recheck, tick, tick those. And tick all those. And copy it. It's copied and save it. Wow. Hello. 
helicopter pans around. All right, I'll put the screen channel on. Now, what do I want to go with? Four? Should I go with three screen or should I go with five screen wide? It's an epic movie. panning if you want to listen to the end credits with the music that's that's pretty cool with the way what they do with the music on the end credits <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what I'm doing up here. A building across the street. I think they have that covered. Well, then when a terrorist bomb threat is called in, the rational purpose of providing that information is to allow us to find the bomb. The rational object of terrorism is to promote terror. Or a threat has turned up an explosive device. We fail to anticipate the unforeseen or expect the unexpected in a universe of infinite possibilities. We may find ourselves at the mercy of anyone or anything that cannot be programmed, categorized, or easily referenced. Now, what are we doing up there, Scully? It's hotter than hell. What are we doing up there, Scully? It's hotter than hell. Maybe we should call on a bomb threat to Houston. I think it's free beer night at the Astrodome. <laughs> going to be followed now protocol. Maybe we should call on a bomb threat to Houston. I think it's free beer night at the Astrodome. Now what? It's locked. So much for anticipating the unforeseen. I had you. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. I had you big time. You had nothing. Come on, I saw you jiggle the handle. Wow. The handle. I saw your face, Muller. There was a definite moment of panic. I saw your face, Muller. There was a definite. Wow, 
like the ambience. Wow. Give me my soda pop. Come on. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Scully. Scully, I found the bomb. You're funny. Where are you, Mulder? I'm in the vending room. Pounding? Yeah, you gotta get somebody to open that door. Nice try, Mulder. Look, Scully, it's in the soda machine. You got about 14 minutes to evacuate this building. <sighs> Come on, Mulder. 56, 1354, 1352, 1350. You see a pattern emerging here, Scully? Hold on, Mulder. I'm going to get you out of there. Hold on, Mulder. I'm going to get you out of there. Wow. Good old Nokia phone. It's just a standard Nokia ringtone, isn't it? <laughs> that sounds pretty realistic, that does. That sounds like that sounds like a mobile phone. Hot high level. Where's, where's that? Where's that damn Nokia? Hello. <laughs> I still got still got those one of those Nokia phones. Wow, battery's probably a bit flat. Probably need to be charging, but I could probably do a do a comparison. A B put put the Nokia phone near to the near to the projection screen and see what the level is because you know you can't variable the level you can only got like i think you got low setting medium and high setting on the uh the outputs uh volume 
and then I could test it and then match match that level. But yeah, it's just just for fun. But <laughs> wow. Yahoo. Hello. Scully, you know that face I just showed you? I'm making that again. Mulder, move away from the door. We're coming through it. Wow. Mulder, move away from the door. We're coming through it. Wow. Wow. Tell me, that's just soda pop in those cans. Just what it looks like. Big IED. Ten gallons of astrolite. Okay. Get everybody out of here. Clear the area. Come on, let's go. Somebody's got to stay here with you. I just gave you an order. Now get the hell out of here and evacuate the building. Can you defuse it? Yes, I can. We got less than four minutes to find out if you're right. Did you hear what I said? Get out. Fade it down a little bit. <laughs> That's going to be a damn big explosion. I mean, they're not a real, like, but cinematic kind of. Yeah, I'll fade it down just a little bit. It's damn. That, that goes pretty d- dynamic. Uh. <laughs> Crying out loud, what do they call that? An air buster? Wow. Wow, wow. What? 
check it out for a little bit on the fader. There's no time! Go, get the car! Just take it off a teeny few DB. Crikey, my neighbours are going to think a bloody demolition is going on. <laughs> oh, flipping that. Oh. Of course, real explosions are very quick and sudden, so, you know. <sighs> wow. Wow. That, that, oh, that music school there. That boy, oh, that's reverberating and pressing against my body. Rolling drums, I just feel it. Oh, eerie. Bees and corn crops. It is the bad Is currently off limits to anyone other than authorized medical. ID and floor your visiting, please. We're going down to the morgue. That area is currently off limits to anyone other than authorized medical personnel. On whose orders? General McCaddy. General McCaddy is who requested our coming down here. We were waking at 3 a.m. and told to get down here immediately. McCaddy. General McCaddy is who requested our coming down here. We were waiting. Already been autopsied. You can tell by the way he's been wrapped in. Excuse me. Can I help you? This is Dr. Kurzweil's residence. Do you have some kind of business with him? Yeah, I'm looking for him. You're looking for him for what? The feds are looking for him too. You have some kind of business with him? Yeah, I'm looking for him. You're looking for him for what? The feds are looking for him too. Real nice business he's got, huh? What's that? Selling naked pictures of little kids on his computer. <laughs> you looking for him for some other reason?
You looking for him for some other reason? Yeah. I have an appointment for a pelvic examination. <laughs> and you want to call if we turn up this curse while I'm bothered. See this crap? Somebody knows I'm talking to you. Not according to the men in blue. Oh, what is it this time? Kitty porn again? Sexual battery of a patient? They want to discredit you for what? Because I'm a dangerous man, because I know too much about the truth. Now that uh, end of the world apocalyptic garbage, you're right? You know my work? I was right about Dallas, wasn't How? I? Right? How are you right? Are you familiar with antivirus, Edge of Yeah, it was a deadly virus spread by field mice in the southwestern United States several years ago. According to the newspaper, FEMA was called out to manage an outbreak of the antivirus. Are you familiar with what the Federal Emergency Management Agency's real power is? FEMA allows the White House to suspend constitutional government upon declaration of a national emergency. Think about that. What is an agency with such broad sweeping power doing managing a small viral outbreak in suburban Texas? You're saying it wasn't such a small outbreak? No. I'm saying it wasn't the antivirus. What was it? What was it? When we were young men in the military, your father and I were recruited for a project. They told us it was biological warfare, a virus. What killed those men? What killed them, I won't even write about. We have no context of what killed those men, or any appreciation of the scale in which it will be unleashed in the future. A plague? for anything out of the ordinary really maybe something from the fema offices where those bodies were found well we weren't expecting to find those remains of course when we sent them off to washington now anything from those offices that you haven't sent off to dc yet some bone fragments turned up in the sift this morning we thought we had another fatality but we found out fema recovered them from an archaeological site out of town have you examined them no just fossils as far as we know i'd like you to let this person take a look at them if you don't mind Just let me see if I can lay my hands on what you're looking for. What you said you weren't coming. I wasn't planning on it, particularly not after spending half an hour in cold storage this morning. But I got a better look at the blood and tissue samples I took from the fireman. And what did you find? Something I couldn't show to anybody else. Not without causing the kind of attention I just assume avoid right now. But what those men were infected with contains a protein coat that I've never seen before. What it did to them, it did extremely fast. How was it contracted? That I don't know. But unless it can respond to conventional treatment, it could be a serious health threat. Like I said, these are just fossils, but they weren't near the blast center, so they're not going to tell you much. Right. Why don't you let's check this out? Mm. 
We showed you the location where these were found. Show you right on the map. and corn crops flipping out so this this really kicks ass in thx the x files i guess that's why they put the x in the x the th the thx files wow i want all of these settings checked and recalibrated Peas and corn crops. Oh, smoky man. Struck hold. We just got on a plane in Tunis. I don't know, Mulder. I don't. Let's go listen to that. I don't know, Mulder. I don't know, Mulder. I don't see any evidence. I don't see any evidence of an archaeological or any other kind of a dig site. This is where he marked on the map, where he said those fossils were unearthed. You're sure those fossils were infected with the same virus you saw at the morgue? Both sets of bones are porous, as if the virus or the causative microbe were decomposing it. And you've never seen that virus before? No. Mm. Look at that. Drive about an inch down. This was laid recently. The equipment looks brand new, too. No irrigation system. No irrigation system. No irrigation system. Somebody's covering their tracks. They all left an hour ago. Going that way. Wow. Going that way. Wow. Going that way. Going that way. Why they put the X in the THX files. <laughs> oh, wow. Going that way. Wow. Oh, I've got pizza cooking, so I don't want to get too much. Oh, it might upset me. Well, that's why they put the X Files in the THX. Fucking brilliant. That's pretty good in five screen. Let's mute that. Listen to the surrounds. <coughs>
Texas X Files on THX steroids. the THX THX tap program this is basically what I'm doing I mean trying to sort of like figure like well how would those guys do it you know they gotta they gotta do a bit of extensive sound rehearsal you know I don't see that I don't see that in any of these home theaters on YouTube like Try and do a video, live video, where you know, not just cutting it and editing it and posting it. And I don't see anything, you know, like, you know, I'm listening, I'm monitoring, I'm listening. You know, the THX uh, program, they had a, uh, they used to have these newsletters, which were pretty, pretty cool. Um, where THX they sent me back in the early night early 90s um they sent me a oh crikey a bundle a bundle of stuff I, I was requesting information back in the early 90s uh they sent me about that it was about that thick it was all these wow oh what nice and there was the these uh news articles and oh everything crikey it was pretty interesting to whet the appetite and uh there was these funky two different types of uh lessers one called thx um monitor and one called the thx files like the, the x files <laughs> uh, they were good reading good reading <coughs> oh look the, the, oh there's the train carrying the Wow. Wow. What are you 
I have no idea. Dome City from Logan's Run, Scully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that pizza's really cooking out there. Oh, well, I'm going to check on that pizza. Just fade that down. Put a memory on this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Put a memory on it. Check that pizza. Oh, wow. I hope that pizza comes out really nice. Because uh, so far I'm dis dissatisfied with the uh, Papa John. Papa John pizzas, they suck. I mean, they, 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 they do a fucking pizza, right? Like, we've covered with a whole block of one kilo of cheese stuck on top of it. Oh, for crying out loud. That's gross. You can't even, you know, if that were a Papa John's pizza, yeah. You wouldn't see the bloody pepperoni on it. It'd be smothered and submerged in about one kilo of cheese. That's not a pizza, for Christ's sake. That's just piling on calories, and you've got to burn it off, haven't you? You've got to exercise and burn the freaking calories off afterwards. Oh, pizza's... It's done. It's... Oh, wow. I'm going to check it out. Can you stay away from the pizza, Magic? She's after the pizza. Won't be good for you, Magic. Won't be good for you. I have a little bit of Paul Newman. It's too hot. Oh, wow, that pizza looks... Wow. That's a pizza. Crying out loud. I mean, a Domino, Domino pizza, they're not bad. They got about, I would say they do the toppings and then the cheese, about 50 50. But with Papa John's, it's like it's like 1% toppings, 99%, well, 100% fucking cheese stuck on top of it. Oh, let's try this. This piece and see what it's like. That's a little bit soggy on this. It's not kind of crisp on the base, but yeah, it's not bad. That's not bad. And it's only about less. And it's only less than two pound. Where's a? Um, just put a little bit of Newman on it. Just put a little bit of Newman spice on it. Where? Um, Pizza that size, a proper uh, pizza that size Domino will be about nine pound, I think. I think this is a, what is it, a twelve or an eight inch? No, that, that's got to be a twelve inch. Um, yeah, Papa John's. I think you pay just a little bit more. Same size pizza, but covered in, covered in about, yeah. In too much cheese. Mm, that's not bad. Maybe if I had a, a Wasset grill thing. Um, maybe I should have put it in a frying pan. Yeah. too bad magic get down get down get down sneaky
my cat magic to try and sneak up and grab the pizza right in front of me cheeky he's got a lot of nerve <laughs> oh now he's trying to sneak around this way now just give me that pizza he says seriously if i let him come up there he'll grab that whole fucking pizza Get down. I think they could have put a little bit more pepperoni on this. But the cheese is okay. It's not. The cheese is okay. Cheese is gra uh, grated. Whereas Papa John, they just take the whole fucking cheese, slap it one fucking kilo on the fucking pizza and fucking... Bleh, and you get the pizza and it's like you pick it up, the slice, and it's just oozing and pizza. That fucking cheese just fucking sliding off the back. You know, that's not a pizza, Papa John's. They are reckoning. Huh. 40 pizzas in 30 days. Oh, the little bug is sneaking up again. Get down, Magic. Magic, get down. Will you stop it? I think I'll have half of this piece and I'll put the rest in and I can heat it up later mm. not bad not bad it's not brilliant but it's not bad Bees, pizza crops. <laughs> that X Files is absolutely brilliant. Uh, The other thing, temperature, the temperature as well. 220 Celsius, 12 minutes. Um, hmm. I think maybe a little less on temperature and just a little bit more on the cooking time. I think that's what you need. Otherwise, too hot, too much temperature, it probably come out wrong. Yeah, trial and error. I'll probably do the next one. Well, have a little bit of this, put the rest in the fridge, and then cook, heat it up next time, but give it about, that's on the temperature. Give it about so many minutes cooking time. Will you get down? He's a cheeky cat. He's a cheeky Tom cat. Magic will have the whole pizza, and then he'll be, and he's now he's going to be sick afterwards, aren't he? Yeah, a little bit more on the cooking time. That's on temperature. A little bit more on the cooking time. My cat magic stays out of the fridge. Oh. Okay, let's see what 
we've got here. So we've got. Let's see what I've got here, magic. Uh, it's not going to quite work. Too fiddly, too fiddly. It won't stick on long, long thing. I'll just get one of those other type of um, faucets. Um, need to put something secure between here and then magic i don't know how he does it but he obviously put, pushes the pressure of both paws and then he just pushes the and then once he's got it like that it, it's just going to move once he's once he pushes it this is a greedy tomcat magic wait Look, 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 there's pizza there, magic. Maybe if I maybe if I rub a little bit of actual pizza on there, you then think it think that is a pizza. <laughs> right. Oh dear. Bees and corn crop. Bees and corn crop. Weird, Very weird. Very weird. Any thoughts as to why anybody would be growing corn in the middle of the desert? Well, this could be giant dippy pop poppers. Oh, 
Well, don't need that moss. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, that doesn't sound cool. That sounds so fucking acoustically real. Well, like, oh, if you've been around just a few bees, you know, and you think, Craggy, don't, don't piss them off, you know, otherwise they're going to sting you. You know, wasps, yeah, squat the squat them, yeah, wasps or something, but not the, not the humble bumblebee. You don't do that to the humble bumblebee. But bloody hell. <sighs> Oh, that was pretty good on the experimental overhead with the, um, the you know, all the, um, you know, channel B. And then, um, of course, all the side ones in the back. Oh, yeah, flipping that. Oh, that freaked me out, that did. That was so overlapping in the mix with overlayers and moving them, panning them, moving them, moving around and flipping that and pitch shifting, I guess some pitch shifting or something going on. Of course, got the blow surround as well and the, um, well, how many types of uh, blow surround running in the room? Um, about one, two, three, four types of blow surround. Oh, look at that. That freaked me out, that did. I knew it was going to be, but wow, that was cool. That was good. That was effective. Ah, don't need Atmos. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, I'll play that again. I'll try, try and try and see if I can be a bit more calm, relaxed. <coughs> Actually, um, turn the screen channel ones off. Mute them. Mute the screen channel. Uh, every, everything that's screen channel, subs as well.
hear this humming sound moving or moving around. Oh, and then the bees. Oh, wow, the bees. Wow. Wow. Kind of coming out this this sort of plane level. But I know the sound is quite speak. Oh, now that's starting to move and pitch and shift frequency and such. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Flipping that, that that swarm came near me. I need one of those um, bee beehive um, suits <laughs> and some smoke. Oh, oh, I've got smoke down there. I've got smoke down there. I need some smoke. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, it still fucking knocks my socks off in the stereo surrounds in this THX cinema. That knocks my socks off. Bloody hell, it's going to give me a heart attack, that is. Fuck hell. So psychoacoustic, bloody scary. got some bass bloody bass mid kick in it as well where it gives a sense of bees coming this way and bass kick in it and then the, with the mm. oh. <laughs> I should try it with the SAS speak, uh, the SAS in the seats the SAS that would be cool that would be good that would probably uh, scare, scare me a little bit more Wow. That's pretty good. So... <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Do not go in that room. Oh, whoa, there's a, still a beef float, float lying around there in, in, the, in, the, in the outside. What the fuck? Oh. See, I gotta be particularly careful about wasps or bee uh, getting indoors because um, if they sting my cats, it could be it could be it could be very fatal. <coughs> Well, now there's helicopters, oh, but uh, I think that's less of my worries. Those bees were fucking out. Let's just mute that because that was too, that was intense. That was intense. Oh, oh gosh. Bees and corn crops. Put side three on. Oh. Wow. Oh, with the way that's mixed. 
I could take that. Oh, I could take that to a another B THX level, if you know what I mean. <coughs> Let me an act. <laughs> Knock my socks off that bit. CAV. X Files CAV. Mostly aliens now, mostly aliens. Wow. Wow, these surrounds really, really wow going. Awesome. Kicking those surrounds. Oh, wow, that's cool. Wow. It's uh, giving a sense of nice, nice on the air, uh, giving a nice kind of downward sort of air. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Bloody hell. Sounds like a bloody earthquake on the Antarctic. If you do quite a bit with this, you don't need that moss. Trust me. Trust me, Mr. Mulder, you don't need Atmos on this. Whoa. Holy shit. Oh, oh, oh crikey. Flipping that, that's reverberating on these JBLs. Oh, now aliens, aliens. Official report is incomplete, pending these new facts I'm being asked to reconcile. Agent Scully, though there's now direct evidence that a federal agent may have been involved in the bombing, the other events you've laid down here are too incredible on their own and quite frankly implausible in their connection. What is it you find incredible? Well, where would you like me to start? So many of the events described in your report defy belief. Antarctica is a long way from Dallas, Agent Scully. I, I can't very well submit a report to the Attorney General that alleges the links you've made here. Bees and corn crops do not quite fall under the rubric of domestic terrorism. No, they don't. Corn crops do not quite fall under the rubric of domestic terrorism. No, they don't. Most of what I find in here is uh, lacking a coherent picture of any organization with an attributable motive. I realize the ordeal you've endured has clearly affected you. Though the holes in your account leave this panel with little choice but to delete these references to our final report to the Justice Department, until which time hard evidence becomes available that would give us cause to pursue such an investigation. I don't believe the FBI currently has an investigative unit qualified to pursue the evidence in hand. I don't 
don't believe the FBI currently has an investigative unit qualified to pursue the evidence. Sounds like Agent Scully is only a few feet away from me. Wow. That dialogue. Wow. That is crystal clear. It sounds like it's only a few feet away from me. <laughs> he has an investigative unit qualified to pursue the evidence in hand. Like that little breathing sound through the nose, the exhale. <clears throat> qualified to pursue the evidence in hand. on page 24 mysteriously our names have been omitted they're burying this thing Scully they're just going to dig a new hole and cover it up I told OPR everything I know what I experienced the virus how it's spread by the bees from pollen and transgenic crops I'm wasting your time Scully I'll never believe you not unless your story can be programmed categorized or easily referenced well then we'll go over their heads no how many times have we been here before, Scully? Wow. Right here. Wow. So close to the truth. Wow. And now with what we've seen and what we know to be right back at the beginning with nothing. This is different, Mulder. No, it isn't. You were right to want to quit. You're right to want to leave me. You should get as far away from me as you can. I'm not going to watch you die, Scully, because of some hollow personal cause of mine. Go be a doctor. Go be a doctor while you still can. I can't. I won't. Mulder, I'll be a doctor, but my work is here with you now. With that virus that I was exposed to, whatever it is, it has a cure. You held it in your hand. How many other lives can we save? If I quit now, they win. Business to discuss. You have regular wow. channels. Listen. Wow. We have business to discuss. You have wow. regular channels. Discuss. You have regular channels. This involves Mulder. Oh, that's Nape. Again and again. Nape. Again and again. Oh, that's Nape. Again and again. Seen more than you should. What is his heel? What is his heel? Of the holy is he but pieces. It's determined now. Reinvested. He's but one man. One man alone cannot fight the future. Yesterday, I received this. 
Mr. Dean, I received this. socks off I like this music what they do with the mix here and the, this got this set of sort of sort of panning around uh, there it goes it starts panning around now <laughs> oh wow just go all completely totally around and across the five screen channels wow oh, it's like x file rave music oh. has got me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got an X-File sneaking up on me.
little bass looking at the sound, the surround. Yeah. Yeah. Super sensitive ears here. Something above, above the fundamental. Oh. There, don't you know, jump on there and knock things over. There, okay. There. there. He's not interested. Are you there? Bee Wrangler. My God, bee assistant. Bee Wranglers. They got bee wranglers. Bees and corn crops. Wow. 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 Oh yeah, I hear those pores. I hear those pores at this angle going across. I hear that I hear that dimension. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was good. That was good atmos sound. No, don't even think about jumping up there, Bear. Do not think about jumping up on top of that technics. No, do not even look at the technics, Bear. got bear problems i've got to wrangle him hey come on don't even think about jumping up they're gonna knock things over there and that's expensive nice good clear lyrics on that nice good, nice good balance on this mix nice good balance on this x files no there. No, do not think about it. It's going to jump up there. Come on, no. No jumping up there, there. Hold on, I saw, I saw one on you there. No, I know you don't like being picked up. I know you don't like being picked up. <sighs> yeah, I've got to wait a couple of days until it arrives back. Yeah! Wow, the X files, the THX files. Only at this THX cinema. Sorry, the rest of you out there, you just haven't got THX. You got the plastic version with the little plastic badge, but not the real thing. Not the real thing.
that was that was that was like audio better, better than audio file <laughs> flipping heck because audio files haven't got thx sadly they got they got half a million million dollar audio file but then sadly they haven't got thx oh my oh dear flipping heck <sighs> Not my socks off that dead. All right, I'm just going to relax now. I'm just going to relax. Just have a little relax now. Uh, I think my cat Bear's relaxing. Yeah, he's kind of relaxing. <coughs> Change that aspect ratio. Like doing a lens turret flipper around. Press it on there. Flip the lens around. <sighs> Bees and corn crops. I'll put that. I've got to put that on my uh, demo list. Just the DTS demo de de demos. Bees and corn crops. Yeah, it might might be might scare some people. Yeah, it might scare some people. So it might be. B phobia or wasp phobia or such, you know, fly phobia. Um, if, well, gosh, uh, nine fifty eight. Did I say ten fifty eight or nine fifty eight? No, nine fifty eight. Okay, uh, it's coming up almost to nine fifty eight. So uh, I'm gonna get Titanic loaded, get it loaded up, and come off this, and come off this. Now I'm going over to get that loaded up.